Hi, my name is Mary. Today, FM plays the best music in Lombasa. Today, FM rocks. My name is Thomas. I'm here in Nakasi and I like to listen to Today FM because it's rocks. And my name is Milinia. Today FM rocks here in Singatoka. My name is El Tripi and Today FM rocks here in Tawa. My name is Mary Jane. I love listening to Today FM here in Bar. Today FM rocks. My name is Ilay Tiambal and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. In the news tonight, nomination period for election candidates starts. NFP targets more seats this time and fire destroy shops in Singatoka town. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Spade. The Electoral Commission has today begun the nomination period for independent candidates and political parties for the 2018 general election next month. During the two weeks nomination, the supervisor of elections will check all applications for compliance and see whether they've met the requirements before a decision is made. Kelly Vavallo reports. Nominations are now open until the 15th of this month and the Electoral Commission has highlighted the requirements needed to become an approved candidate. The nomination forms are to be accompanied with deposits of $1,000 for each party candidate and $1,000 for each independent candidate. Those who wish to register their nomination as an independent candidate must also present a list of 1,000 supporters Chandra adds if any candidate wishes to withdraw its nomination, they are to provide a written notice to the SOE no later than 12 p.m. on 16th October. The objections to any candidate nominations appeals to the decision of the supervisor of election must be received by the Electoral Commission no later than by 4 p.m. on 16th of October. Once these requirements have been met and any objections and appeals approved, dealt with, the FEO will proceed with the national candidates list. Meanwhile, some political parties will be announcing the remaining proposed candidates in a few days. We haven't announced any, but we have finalized 38 so far. And we also have uh, other candidates that we can look at. The party will be uh, finalizing its uh, candidates. I think it will be pretty soon. The Electoral Commission says there will be two types of nomination forms, one for individual candidates and the other for political parties. Both forms can be accessed from the Fijian Elections website and the final list of candidates will be revealed on the 16th of this month. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. Prime Minister Vurenge Mbani Marama says with the general election campaign picking up, the use of social media is concerning, as many politicians will try and divide Fijians by instilling them with fear and mistrust. He has again reiterated that Fijians cannot tolerate that old hateful style of politics any longer. Mbani Marama says Fijians should reject those politics of division, lies and animosity by shunning any who attempt to pit Fijian against Fijian on the basis of religion ethnicity, gender, province, socio-economic status or background. Sainan Mboila has more. With the November 14 date for the general election announced yesterday, the Prime Minister says Fiji proudly stands as a nation whose electoral process is driven by a guiding principle, one person, one vote and one value. He says over the coming weeks there will be much debate between the politicians and it is important that we all listen to what everyone has to say. Baini Marama says Fijians must always lend a careful ear to the promises and positions of each party and above all we must always listen for the truth and actively demand it. The PM says while these political tricks may be old, the methods by which they are spread are new Today, they are being spread with a heightening level of aminosity, hatred and prejudice, and also through social media. He adds, since the last election, tens of thousands more Fijians have gone digital. They have more mobile devices and computers, more access to affordable data and internet services, and a larger presence on Facebook than ever before. Baini Marama is urging all party leaders to hold social media behavior to a higher standard, saying as a leader, it is their duty to ensure their candidates, officials and supporters conduct themselves with the same dignity and decorum online as we expect them to in person. He says some may try to tear down our democracy by spreading lies and falsehoods. By seeking the truth, we are all actively protecting everything Fiji has worked so hard to build. Saini Animboila, FBC News.
The National Federation Party, which raked in over 27,000 votes in the 2014 election, is heading into the November 14 polls with high hopes. Party leader Biman Prasad says all 51 nominated candidates for this year's election will be finalized by the end of this week to be submitted to the Fijian Elections Office next week for screening. Akusita Thale has more. The NFP is confident of securing more votes this year from the hard work of their candidates campaigning on the ground. And many of them are in the field, many of them are talking to our people and uh, I'm very pleased with the response that we are getting uh, from all our candidates and uh, uh, I can tell the people of this country that we are ready uh, to be the new government after 4th, uh, 14th of November. Party leader Biman Prasad says only five provisional candidates who want to run under their banner have yet to be announced as 46 others wait to be screened by the elections office. The party is also expected to release its manifesto, a living document to Fijians. Look at our policies, understand our policies in detail, debate our policies, critique our policies. And I think we've had very, very good feedback on uh, some of the major policies that we've announced with respect to TELS, with respect to reducing the cost of living, with respect to implementing a minimum living wage of $5. Meanwhile, Atar Singh has resigned as General Secretary of the Fiji Islands Council of Trade Unions to contest the election under the NFP banner. The workers and unions have suffered for too long and are crying out for fairness and justice. Clearly, all this can't be achieved without a unionist being elected to be their voice. It is for these reasons that I have resigned all my positions to stand for election so that I can advance the cause of workers. Atar Singh, during the 2014 election, roped in 716 votes, 2.65% of the total votes by the NFP. Akusita Tale, FBC News. We now cross to Akosita Thale, joining us live. Akosita, we understand the NFP party leader, while making final touches to his lineup for the general election, also advised other parties about campaigning. Can you tell us more about this? Yes, Jackie. Biman Prasad today called on all political parties not to campaign on fear, but to campaign on facts and policies. He was directing this to Fiji First Party leader Vorenge Benmarama following his comment yesterday advising Fijians to vote for the right party as the country cannot afford to go back to 2000. Biman claims Benmarama was already going on a campaign of fear mongering. However, the Fiji First Party leader told FBC News that he doesn't want to waste his time responding to allegations and claims made by other parties or party leaders. Additionally, Biman also made allegations that the police did not bother to uh, give a reason as to why they declined FTUC's planned march and rally over the weekend. Police Commissioner Brigadier General Siti Veningiliho this afternoon said the force will not be drawn to any political grandstanding by Biman Prasad, adding that they will only discuss this with, uh, with permit applicants and no one else, including politicians. Thanks so much for that update, Akusita. Campaigning by political parties is shifting a gear following the announcement of the writ of election yesterday. Parties began to unveil billboards around the country as they kickstart their race ahead of the 2018 general election. There are eight registered political parties, out of which seven will contest the 2018 general election on November 14th. The Social Democratic Liberal Party is expected to officially announce its manifesto this week. Sadelpa General Secretary Andiliti and Gyonim Baravi has confirmed the manifesto will be announced together with their remaining four proposed candidates. Gyonim Baravi had partially mentioned earlier during their annual general meeting in July that their manifesto will be based on the theme sustainable management of Fiji's economy, which also includes Fiji's debt level, inclusive growth and general partnership. The political party is also expected to file its nominations to the elections office on Thursday. Still to come, WHO says Mency outbreak is under control and Biosecurity Authority inspects sites for termite infestation details after the break. Bula, never go malakai leloma, go ngai na kasi, ondo wa rong na mbula fep, na bando a ena sere. Oya o wa shit sai sai lombasa, ya ondo talita ina wa rong na mbula fep, na bando a ena sere. Bula da tumeli, akwa na tau no hinga toka, talita kina na wa rong na mbula fep, na bando a ena sere. 
Firefighters from Singatoka, Korolevu and Nandi are still at the scene opposite the Singatoka market, where a building caught fire just after midday. Chief Fire Officer Ngyoni Lao Modetai says they have contained the fire from spreading further. However, Modetai says four shops, which includes Minu's, Ravendra's restaurant, home and living outlet and courts outlet have been destroyed by the fire. Modetai says no one sustained injuries in the incident. Investigations to ascertain the cause of fire will begin soon. Uh, we were uh, uh, able to stop the fire at the court uh, uh, showroom. And at the moment, the boys are working on the, in trying to extinguish the burning uh, material. The World Health Organization has revealed that Fiji is approaching the end of the meningococcal outbreak declared by the Health Ministry in March of this year. The WHO says the mass vaccination MINCI program rolled out by the ministry has been successful in ensuring the outbreak has been controlled. Rachel Nuth with the story. As we approach the end of the deadly outbreak, the Fijian Health Ministry cannot let its guard down, says the World Health Organization. The Ministry of Health and Medical Services is uh, ensuring that clinical specimens are being collected from the recent suspected cases to be able to actually either confirm them using laboratory tests or be able to exclude them as cases of meningococcal disease. And surveillance for new cases is heightened so that any new suspected cases are being detected early with no definite time frame given on the full eradication of the outbreak, the World Health Organization says the only way to be sure is through full coverage of the vaccination. The vaccination campaign relies on high coverage and so that is the aim of the Ministry of Health and Medical Services. The health ministry is also sharing similar sentiments. The parents know if the, ch if the child has not been vaccinated, please uh, go to the nearest health centre or cooperate with our visiting teams. and. Uh, the community health workers to ensure that we protect you and your families. Akbar is also advising the public that vaccination is not the solution and that all Fijians still need to practice best hygiene practices at all times. The health ministry teams will continue with its awareness program. Rachel Na, FBC News. The Biosecurity Authority inspected over 1,300 sites in the first six months of this year for Asian subterranean termite infestation. With this being the termite swarming season, residents of the Lautoka and Lambasa districts are being urged to take all necessary precautions. Ritika Pratap reports. The residents in Lautoka and Lambasa, which have been declared biosecurity emergency areas of Asian subterranean termites, have been proactive in taking heed of advice. We try our best. If I see infestation in any timber, I change it immediately. Biosecurity did help us at first, but in a few years our entire house got infested. Now my son has demolished some parts of the house and we have to rebuild. The Biosecurity Authority says between July and August they made over 600 inspections. They expect more reports from the public on ASD infestation or sighting. This is just raw numbers in terms of the reports that have come to us, but when we go and inspect the sites, uh, it's not the case that all of the reports are actually AST uh, issues. Ngozai says upon inspection, when they find AST infestation, they administer treatment. However, it cannot change the state of damages to the structure. Beth is urging the residents in affected areas to report early to avoid major damages to houses. Ritika Pratap. FBC News. A bail ruling is expected tomorrow in the case of a 28-year-old man who allegedly attempted to murder his partner by drowning her in Doloi Suva last month. Military officer Rajiv Pariachi appeared in Suva High Court charged with one count of attempted murder. It's alleged that he pushed his partner into the water and tried to drown her. The state objected to the bail application, saying there is strong evidence against the accused and if Pariachi is released on bail, he might be a danger to the complainant. Defence lawyers said the prosecution has not provided good reasons to deny his client's bail. The matter has been adjourned to tomorrow.
Fiji expects an increase in the population of older persons in the next 30 years. With this, Tui Madhuwata Ratuwiliame Katonivere is urging the public at large to allow our mothers and fathers to age with dignity. Eleanor Tarangai View reports. Celebration for Senior Citizens Week in Lambasa kick-started with a march through Lambasa town with the message ensuring the rights of our elderly are respected. We are asking the public to, to protect that right of us and to respect it because Senior Citizens, we, we belong to the, to the marginalized group and when, when anything happens, disaster or when climate change comes into play, we are the ones who suffer more than normal people. The number of older persons, those who are aged 60 and over, is projected to grow from 69,300 in 2010 to 150,500 in 2050, while the number of those who are 80 years and older are expected to increase from 5,000 to 28,500 in the same period. Population dynamics is one of the key challenges that the world is confronting us in this time and age. If our ambition is to build a future we want, we must address the population over 60. The statistics from the Ministry of Social Welfare also reveal that there will be more older persons living in the rural areas than in the urban areas, and life expectancy will be higher. One of the guiding principles of our government is leaving no one behind and live up to that, we should also see that age matters in any development to happen. The theme for the week, celebrating older human rights champions, is dedicated to older persons around the world who have dedicated their lives to championing human rights. Eleanor Oturangaiwiu, FBC News. Coming up in sports later, Jamie will have the latest on the upcoming IDC. But before that, here's Rachel with all the day's business updates. Thanks, Jackie. Good evening and coming up after the break. FSC crushes over a million tons of sugar. And in growing Fiji, farmers receive brand new cold rooms. Stay with us. Dollar, I am Eleanor. For the best classic kids, I only listen to Gold FM here in Singapore. Gold FM, only the classic kids. My name is Yeni Rawa. I love listening to Gold FM here in Nosuri. Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Dino. I'm from Africa, Coro Coro, Singatoka. I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Salote. I love listening to Gold FM here in Nosuri. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Bula, my name is Mariva. Gold FM plays the best classics here in Africa, Singatoka. Gold FM, only the classic hits. In business tonight, the Fiji Sugar Corporation's three operational sugar mills have crushed over a million tons of sugar this season. FSC Chief Operating Officer Naveen Chandra says 1.01 million tons of cane has been harvested and 107 tons of sugar has been made. Chandra says the crushing is on track with the expected aim to crush 1.7 million tons of sugar cane this year. While the harvesting season is almost over, farmers are being urged to start land preparation and plant more crop for next year. We are uh, over the 1 million mark already, and which is over, just over 60% of our crop has been harvested uh, so far. Uh, we're looking at our mills, probably will continue towards end of November. Uh, we want to make sure that every stock of cane uh, get harvested. Paid employment in the hotel sector increased by 5.6% from April to June this year due to increased tourist arrivals. The Fiji Bureau of Statistics says the room occupant rate increased by 52.5% in the second quarter of this year. Visitors from Australia made up the highest percentage of arrivals to the coastal in uh, Nandi and Mamanudas. Visitors from the United States made up the highest percentage of occupants in hotels of the Northern Division and other islands, including Kandavu. Meanwhile, Suva had the highest number of visitors from other countries, with the majority from Japan and Pacific Island nations. And we now join Sinifa from HFC Bank with the latest from the trading world. The Japanese yen was trading at a 10-month low against the U.S. dollar today. The yen was weighed down by increased risk appetite after the United States and Canada 
reached a last-minute deal to replace the North American Free Trade Agreement. The U.S. dollar consolidated recent gains, hovering near a three-week high, boosted by higher U.S. Treasury yields, while the euro dropped on prolonged worries about Italy's budget deficit. Closer to home, the Reserve Bank of Australia is set to leave interest rates unchanged at the record low of 1.5% and will likely retain a neutral stance. Meanwhile, the Kiwi was largely sidelined overnight with a focus on the upcoming New Zealand Global Dairy Trade Index. That's all from HFC Bank for now, Inaka. Thanks, Anifa. On to the exchange rates. The new Canada, U.S. and Mexico trade agreement eased some concerns on the foreign exchange market, seeing the Fijian dollar rising against our major trading partners, Australia and New Zealand, and gain against the euro as well as the Japanese yen. However, lost some ground against the U.S. dollar, the Chinese yuan and the Kina. As for the commodities market, oil prices jumped by over $3 a barrel to close at $75. Gold was up more than $5, closing at $1,189 per ounce, and silver gained as well, closing at $1,450 per ounce. And in growing Fiji tonight, it was good news for two farmers in Nandi today after they received a brand new cold room for storage of fruits and vegetables. The cold room is part of improving key services to agriculture and horticulture projects, which is being funded by European Union and implemented by SPC. Philippe Nakaso has more. This modern cold storage facility will allow Amman's marketing to improve its handling and storage of pineapple and watermelon and to enable the company to expand its supply to the tourism and retail sectors. Off-season, uh, the cooler uh, helps in the off-season one, like we can store the thing, you know, uh, or like hurricane or flooding time. Another Fijian company, Farmboy, also had an upgrade of their operations through the resurfacing of its processing room floor installation of air conditioning and upgrading their freezer and cold room storage. This will enable them to process produce and meet high quality control standards expected in the market. With the pack house, air conditioned pack house means it's all airtight, there's no even dust free environment. Because we've sealed the entire pack house, you can see there's no windows around. Right? So we, it means dust free and temperature controlled. We're looking to make sure the Ministry of uh, Agriculture's extension officers can continue to provide the training that is necessary to produce high quality produce, so which we can hopefully replace imported produce with. $30,000 was the cost of the cold storage facility for Amman's marketing, while Farmboy received a $50,000 upgrade. Philippe and Icaso, FBC News. And that's it from Business for Tonight. Jamie joins you now with sports. Thank you, Rachel, and good evening in sports tonight. Reto Kani tipped to compete for Flying Fijians number 10 jersey. And Nasinu ready for IDC. This and more after the break. Hi, I'm Jyotishma. I'm from Singatoka. I love listening to Mitch Shepherd. Mitch Shepherd is hot. Mirchi FM is number one. I'm Charlene Robert. Mirchi FM rocks in Lambasa. I'm Sona Mena. Sorry, Jackson. Mirchi FM is hot. My name is Raymond Dutt. I'm a bubble singer line. Mirchi FM is hot in Lambasa. I'm Kritika from Jackson. Sorry. I love listening to Mirchi FM here in Nasori. Mirchi FM is hot. Mirchi FM is hot. Fiji Airways Nrua Fly Half, Alibriti Veto Kani and Lok Albert Tuisue have been confirmed for the Flying Fijian squad that will prepare for the November tour in Europe. John McKee says he is impressed with their current form and believes they have the potential to represent the nation at the World Cup in Japan next year. Marcel Prasad reports. There is an open challenge for Fijian Rua star Alifreti Veito Kani to step up and don the Flying Fijians number 10 jersey. He's really got to step up and, and, and challenge Ben. And, and you know, believe that he can be the number one, number ten for, for World Cup. So that that puts him in the best 
in the best mindset. After his recent performance in the National Rugby Championship, Flying Fijians coach John Mackey has no doubt Vaitokani can perform at the international level. Mackey has also been impressed by Lock Albert Tuisue. And I see him as a genuine lock slash back row option possibly for the Flying Fijians. While the draw are on track to see the home semi-final, Maki says the match against the Canberra Vikings this weekend will be tough. I think the Vikings will will gift them as much ball. I think against the Vikings they'll have to they'll have to work a lot hard. Draw coach Semirusi Serubakula has been impressed with their performance and believes they will be ready for another tough encounter. For the line-out it's a big uh, step from the our first game it was 43 percent and uh, second game was 54. And then the, the last uh, game in uh, Mackay, uh, the game in Mackay was 63. The Drua plays the Vikings at 3 p.m. at Chachel Park in Lautoka on Saturday. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. Eight teams are expected to take part in the fourth Christian Mission Fellowship International Sevens in Lambasa from the 25th to the 27th of this month. The tournament will run in three divisions, men's, women's and the under-19 men's competition. CMFI Madhuata Regional Secretary Simeon Engusui Valu says there are also teams from Vitilevu confirmed for the tournament. Last year, the, uh, it was uh, McDonald's Sonata. They are going to come again this year to defend the title uh, with a new name of uh, Westfield. And uh, there are other teams, uh, likes of uh, Police and uh, uh, Hydro Naita Siri. Newborn, Wemasana from Neta Siri, Cross of Victory, uh, First Light, uh, Taviuli. And we are expecting other teams like uh, the Wardens and uh, some other big teams. The newly promoted Nasinu football side has taken on the underdog stag for the Courts Inter-District Championship that begins Friday at NZ Stadium in Suva. Making their return after eight years, the side admits it will be tough mixing it up with the big guns, but they aren't undermining their own capabilities. Vasil Prasad has more. The former winners know it will be a tough ask from the opening whistle. Once known as the Giant Killers, the side has signed eight players to strengthen the team. Expect the players to deliver whatever they have got uh, for us uh, come this IDC. With the veteran players like Dinesh Mudliar, Nathan Kumar and Usaya Tandu, the side has also been boosted with the inclusion of goalkeeper Alzar Alam, Savina Dabala in Rokan Roka, Armani Manu Manubai and Manasa Levadi in the team. Expectation is high from the officials and as far as the fans. So I'll give in my 100% and I'll make sure that we do something this IDC. Coach Nathan Shivam, who won the tournament as a player with Suva, is keeping a low profile going into the championship. We might not be able to see the full strength of this team uh, currently, but uh, come future, we can expect a lot of things. Nasinu has played in the IDC final four times, having won in 1990 when they defeated Suva 1 0 via a Tomovania goal. The side begins its campaign against Lambasa at 3 30 pm on Friday. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. An under-15 rugby league team from the Northern Inland Academy of Sports in Australia is in the country to play two matches against development teams in Nandi. 21 players are part of the team that will face the Sambeto Roosters tomorrow and then the Storm under-15 side on Thursday. Um, yeah, I don't know really what to expect to be honest because I've never seen any of the boys from here before but I'm expecting pretty good footy, pretty rough, um, hard footy, pretty tough, um, fit boys, you know big athletics. So we want this to be an, an uh, annual event whereby uh, we will get um, netball, uh, soccer and then uh, establish uh, a sports relationship with um, NIAS to bring a rugby league uh, on an annual basis. That's it from Sports Tonight. Join Angie later on with weather and the new media. Figures revealed Snapchat user numbers are dwindling. Details coming up. Radio Fiji One, Radio Fiji One,
media tonight, Snapchat's got a problem. Users are disappearing just like its messages from 191 million a day down to 188 million. Snapchat's been around since 2011 with its main appeal for those under the age of 25. And it's weather time now with Angie. Hello there and welcome to the weather world. Another overcast day for most of the country. However, stormy weather is moving in and a heavy rain alert has been issued. More on that in a moment, but first moving on to the western side. Incredibly beautiful light showers will swing by tonight. Eastwards from Pekhaba to Siva, more of a gloomy and breezy day today. And up north, very warm, clear skies throughout the day. At sea, a strong wind warning is in effect for all Fiji waters, with winds gusting to 25 knots and rough seas. For the tides, high tide at 12.12 a.m. with low tide at 6.45 a.m., sunrise at 5.45. For tomorrow, stormy wet weather is expected to roll in tonight, bringing rain to all parts of the country. A heavy rain alert has been issued for eastern areas with showers expected in the west. Tomorrow's stems, Suva will be the coolest spot with a high of 27 degrees. And looking further on to Thursday, expect clearer conditions. And it's back to you, Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fiji and Pulse tonight, we asked, with the voter registration for the general election closing yesterday, we asked Fijians if they did register in time to vote. Uh, yes. It gives me the freedom to choose uh, which uh, government should uh, leave the, uh, lead the country. Yes, I have registered and I want the next government to be led by God. I'm already registered for the general election for this year, 2008. I'm going to use the same card that I used in the last elections because I have not changed my address. So in saying that, I will cast my vote in the same place where I cast my vote in the last elections. Yes, I have registered already and I am ready to cast my vote in this year's elections. Yes, I am registered there and I am going to vote we want a new good government. Recapping the main stories for tonight, nomination period for election candidates starts. NFP confident of winning more seats this time and fire destroys shops in Singatoka town. Now for these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question segment this week, we're asking, are you wearing pink this month to support breast cancer awareness? Visit our FBC website to answer. Before we go, our shot of the day taken at Emperor Beach in Rakiraki by Lo Young of Tongovere Village in Ra. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight from the team and I. Stay safe. Good night. मैं नवनीत नन नंबोलुम बुआ से जैसे प्रेनी नोट मशहूर है वैसे रेडियो फिजी टू भी सभी जगह मशहूर है रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन सीमा नकाशी से मैं रेडियो फिजी टू पसंद करती हूँ सुनने के लिए रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन मैं हूँ अंकल किंग सिंगर तो कहता हूँ कि टैक्सी ड्राइवर देश के रग्बी फेम